Madam Speaker. Greg O'Connor. Madam Speaker. Before me sits an irony-free zone. <laughs> We've just had the Leader of the Opposition stand up and talk for, I think it was up to 15 minutes, I think he might have run a little short, no talking about people in conducting behaviour um, that he didn't approve of, while sitting behind him, talking about leadership, sitting behind him, and at that stage the House was full, someone sitting there was someone who leaked all his details um, not a week ago. Right and so here he is, standing here moving. No wonder he was moving so much, because clearly there would have been a little red mark on his back that he wouldn't have wanted to settle anywhere between his shoulder blades. Because to stand here while all that is happening, boy, the stitching on some of those seats must be coming apart considering how much buttocks moving, squeezing would have been going on <laughs> as that absolutely ironic tirade came out from the minister, the, oh, sorry, the ex-minister, sorry, the uh, leader of the opposition. Just last week, I was fortunate enough, the week before now, just for, I, was, I was fortunate enough to be in um, Canberra um, on a select committee. And we sat there, sitting behind the Liberal benches, as we saw the coup being building before our very eyes. Um, we had the pleasure of being out with the Speaker, um, out with the President of the Senate um, and many other MPs on that Monday night when it was all happening. Um, and so what we did, we saw, we understand, we see when we see a coup in progress. And boy, it's good to sit here and watch and see a coup in progress. Oh, Mr Mitchell, Mr Mitchell, you're laughing. Mr Mitchell, it's funny as I watched Peter Dutton. I thought, eh, Peter Dutton. Who in the opposition is most likely, who fits the profile of Peter Dutton most? Order, And I looked. Order. I know it's a very broad debate. But there is a topic, and I would like the member to come to that topic. Well, thank you for your direction, Madam Speaker. And I'll just finish on uh, perhaps um, that uh, honourable member. Um, as, I, as I say, I, I just thought, and, as, and I was nudging, and there were several of us watching, we thought, who, who, who fits what role in this particular place? So, yeah, I, I thought uh, the Peter Dutton of the opposition, um, the man I'd watch, um, who I'd be moving in. Speaking of having little markers, snipers' rifles on your back, yeah, we know who's most likely to have one of them too. So while we're watching Mr Mitchell, I'll be watching. And of course, um, you know, there was Julie Bishop there. Well, I looked about who's the Julie Bishop on there? And well, there were a few contenders there. Blonde hair, I thought. Mm, yeah, that's, that's opening up for a whole field we've opened up here. And of course, who was the one that came through? Oh, Mr. Morrison. Who's the real Mr. Morrison? Who's the one that's actually going to come? Who's going to win? Well, I'm just sitting watching. We'll watch that. It's great. I sit up the back there most of the time, Madam Speaker. It's a great place to watch. You can see, watch the body language. So we'll be taking a few. We'll be taking a few bets on our side of the house. In fact, I might even run a book on it. Um, and, who, and we'll see. So, uh, coming back from Australia, Madam Speaker, I feel like I'm fairly accomplished in watching coups take place. And boy, I love what I saw over there. But uh, on a more serious note, uh, Madam Speaker, and, and perhaps, and I'll take to your advice topic, and come back, nice. come back to the topic, to the um, what to the we topic, saw. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Madam Speaker, no, I was speaking too loud. And over, uh, you, no, no, I, I want you to speak to the topic. All right, and back, back to the topic. And look, uh, when I came to this House, Madam Speaker, and I'm, I'm a very new member, um, and I, I, one thing I've always respected, and, and of course, Mr. Mitchell will be the same, is good, decisive leadership. We know where we stand. And boy, um, on this side, we know where we stand now. Um, it's, and that's absolutely necessary. Tinged also with kindness, not the sort of thing that. Uh, Consistency is also what we consider, what we like, um, and the word Oravida comes to mind there about consistency. So I love it again when I've heard the opposition on the other side sort of talking about um, what's happened over here, but just go back to Oravida. I mean, I sat there as uh, in that stage I you Point of order, <laughs> the Honourable Paula Bennett. Yeah, I really reluctantly interrupt a speaker because I do respect a general debate. But actually we all um, this is blatantly about Claire Curran and uh, her being stood down. We've not heard a name mentioned once. We've not seen that addressed at all. And we've been at nearly five minutes. And I think that the necessity does need to be addressed. Yep. I, I, I actually support that point of order. I have spoken to the member twice. 
and uh, we, we, uh, you know, uh, if the member does not come to the topic for this urgent debate, it's not a general debate, it's an urgent debate, then I will have to curtail his time. Thank you for your direction there, um, Madam Speaker. Um, I will come now, because I, I think I do like to um, build some context uh, for my point in this debate. And one, one of my main points in this debate is that, and look, I, I agree, um, and the, my, my, my colleague, um, Madam Speaker, um, I think as I've seen what's happened with uh, uh, Honourable Claire Curran, and I've seen what's happened, and, and as she's been part of, and, and really been the personification um, of what the, we understand now is the expected standard of behaviour. Um, we will be left with no doubt um, on this side of the House. But can I just make a little more serious point around this, um, Madam Speaker? Um, is that, and I in no way justify with what's happened and absolutely agree with the uh, decision um, of um, uh, Jacinda Ardern around this, of our Prime Minister on this. But can I just finish in saying it will be a shame if ministers can't actually have conversations with people, um, casual conversations, not justifying what happened, but it would be a shame if, as a result of this, we never ever, and ministers never actually got uh, to have conversations um, off, the, uh, off the grid. But uh, thank you uh, very much for the opportunity to speak, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, I'll just say I'm very proud to be part of an organisation, of a party that shows the decisive leadership that has been shown on this occasion. I call the Honourable Dr Nixon. Madam Speaker, that speech...